That said, I also want to give you something else today as a ministry moment, and I really do just want to take a few moments. I want to talk to you about how to live an anxiety-free life. Before I do, because I can cut this part out and move on to the anthem, is there anybody who would benefit from knowing how to live an anxiety-free life? I just need to know if I should, if I should share this. Florence is scratching her chin chin. I think that's her way. Her she's, like, she's like, bring it on. Sign language for bring it on, bring it on. If stay on the oop and stay. How to live an anxiety-free life. I want to talk to you about that. Um, the key to anxiety and the path to peace is found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, where Paul writes, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Yeshua. He reveals to us that the opposite side of anxiety is the peace of God. And that the key to dealing with anxiety is not to deal with the anxiety, to not even pay attention to what you're feeling anxious over but instead to press in to the peace of God. I want to tell you what the missing link is. The missing link is worry. Anxiety can only come where worry is. If there is no worry, there's nothing to be anxious about. Anxiety is like what we studied in chemistry, those covalent bonds where one atom has to have another atom in order to bond to with H2O, that oxygen needs two hydrogens in order to bond to it and form water. If it doesn't have that, that oxygen never becomes water. And so in the same way, anxiety has to bond to worry. If you don't feed yourself with worry, you will have no problem with anxiety. And this is why the Lord says in Matthew chapter 6, over and over again, he says, therefore I say to you, what? Do not worry. He says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Then he says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? In other words, does worry and work for you? Who is better off after worry? Who sleeps better after a good night of worry? I've been worrying all day. I slept like a baby. <laughs> worry will actually make you gain weight. Worry will rob you of your sleep. Worry will affect uh, your relationships. Worry will make you short with the people that you love. He says, so why do you worry about really anything? Then he goes on once again and says, therefore what? Do not worry. The cure is, or the missing link is, do not worry. And the simple cure then to anxiety is found in Proverbs 3, verse 5. Very often when we quote Proverbs, we pro quote verses 5 and 6. But the cure to beating anxiety is to focus on Proverbs 3, verse 5. It says what? Let's read it together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Let's read that again. This time I want you to read it to yourself. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That is a simple cure to anxiety. If we're anxious about anything, it's because we are not trusting the Lord. If I trust the Lord with my job, how can I be anxious about that project? If I trust the Lord with my family, how can I be anxious about what the school said about my son? 
If I trust the Lord with my needs, how can I be anxious about going to the blank bank with this application? If I trust the Lord that his will is being done in my life, how can I be worried about tomorrow? I can't worry and trust the Lord. So the key to not being anxious is simply to trust the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. I want to encourage you to leave verse 6 alone. Because verse 6 is going to bring you back into anxiety. Because you got control issues. Try not to look at anybody in particular. <laughs> that felt very personal, Pastor. You got control issues. So as soon as I told, tell you that if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he's going to do this. You're going to try to control him doing this. And then he doesn't look like he's doing it, Pastor. I've done my part. And it looks like he had not straightened my path. And what am I going to do? And here comes anxiety again. Arr, it's back in your life. Just want to tell you, trust the Lord and get out of your own head. Get out of your own pretty little head because you don't know what's supposed to happen Therefore, how can you be anxious about it not happening? I want to give you seven ways to attack anxiety. Why attack it? Because it undermines your declaration of faith. When you worry and have anxiety, it contradicts your faith in God. You say you trust the chair, but you won't sit down. You know somebody trusts the chair that they're in when you see them all laid back. Like sometimes when I'm preaching and some of y'all, that sleep demon comes in and gets you. And I catch you at the corner of my eye and you way laid back in the corner. Talking about I'm doing security, Pastor. I'm not calling nobody out. I'm not calling nobody out. Seven ways to attack anxiety. Number one, remember that the most important lesson you can learn in life is to trust the Lord. Everything in your life is designed to teach you to trust the Lord. Don't miss the lesson looking at what you're going through. Everything is designed to teach you to trust the Lord. And once you get that lesson, class is over. Number two, learn from your past. Plan for what you can anticipate. Even as you release what you cannot change in your past, or control in your future. There are some things you can plan for. But there are some things you don't know are coming. Get out of that because that's control. Plan for what you can plan for. When you look back at your past, some people get anxious over their past. Have you ever ordered... Let, let me tell you something. I went up to New York a couple of days ago. Last week, we went up to New York... We are walking in Times Square. We had a little time on our hands, and we went to a watch shop. I like watches. And went to a watch shop, and they had watches on sale. Buy two, get four free. <laughs> nice watches. Buy two, get It was their spring sale. Nice watches. When the guy looked at my arm, I actually, I had on one of their watches when I walked in. He was looking at my hand. He said, welcome, sir. He knew I was a buyer. He thought he had one. And I said to Andrew when we left out of there, I'm not going to get anything today. Buy to get four free? How can you walk away from that? Well, I get watches that, uh, watches signify that I have completed something that God has asked me to do. So every watch that I have is tied to me doing something that is, that is an act of obedience. And so I will not get a watch as a fashion statement. I only get a watch when I finish the book, when I finish the degree, when I do what God tells me to do, I get a watch. And the watch is a reminder that this was something that God called me to obey. So I couldn't do the deal. And I walked out the store. It's useless for me then to get home, talk about I wish I had gotten those watches. <laughs> Unless I'm going to go back in time and buy the watch, keep on moving. Because you can get anxious over what you didn't do, but you can't undo it. 
I wish I'd remember to pick up eggs. That's silly talk. Because you didn't. You can plan to buy them tomorrow, but talking about what you didn't get is inviting anxiety into your life. Are you hearing me? Yes. Number three. Live in each day and fully in each moment. Give us this day our daily bread. Number four, confront worry with faith whenever it comes. Don't tolerate worry in your life. It's not okay. Somebody say it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Number five, Rehearse God's promises to build your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Number six, remember God's past faithfulness to build your trust. What has he already done for you? And hasn't he done enough that his credit is good with you? And number seven, always rely on on God's sufficiency, not yours. You don't need to be prepared. Do you know when I thought about having an evening with Coach John? Saturday morning about 10.30. I was in a conversation and stuff was pouring. And I said, you know, I need to have an evening with Coach John. And we, I was talking to people and they laughed and I laughed. And a couple hours later, I had the email going out. Well, when did you prepare for it? I don't need to be prepared for it. The prepared one lives in me. Amen. He's always ready with the right now word. Amen. When did it become about my sufficiency when he is all sufficient? So that's how you live an anxiety-free life. And I hope that these words have helped and ministered to someone.